welcome back my dear students in the previous video we were discussing about bounded linear operator we were not discussed about its examples in this video we will be discussing about some of the examples of bounded linear operators bounded linear operators example first example is consider consider a normed space x which is not equal to set 0 and define a function i from x to x defined by ix is equal to x for all x or the identity function so the identity function this is actually bounded okay so in order to prove that it is enough to prove that norm of ix by norm x should be less than or equal to some c so it is easy here norm ix is always equal to x which means that norm of ix should be equal to norm of x which implies norm of ix should be less than or equal to 1 into norm x here c is equal to actually 1 and also norm of ix by norm x should be equal to 1 because of this and its supremum should always be equal to 1 because each of this quantity is 1 which means that norm of i or the norm of the identity operator is always 1 so identity operator which is defined on any normed space other than set 0 is always a bounded linear operator with c is equal to 1 let's move on to another example another simple example the example is the zero operator second example so x and y be two normed spaces and the operator zero from x to y defined as zero x is equal to zero for all x this is also a bounded linear operator because norm of 0 x should be equal to norm of 0 which is equal to 0 which is less than or equal to 0 into norm x okay so norm of 0 is always less than or equal to 0 into norm x here c is equal can be considered as 0 and also norm of 0 x by norm of x for every x not equal to 0 should be equal to 0 which means that its supremum is always 0 which implies that norm of the 0 operator is always 0 so the 0 operator and the identity operators are always bounded linear operators now let's move on to another example third example third example is let x be the collection of all collection of all polynomials polynomials defined on 0 1 instead of 0 1 you can consider first in the world a b as well okay so with the norm norm of x is equal to maximum t element of 0 1 modulus of x of t okay so this is the norm and define define the operator t from on x for from x to x 
using the differential operator that is t of x of t is equal to x dash t which means the derivative of x with respect to t or d by dt of x of t. So this is actually an operator, linear operator which is defined on x. We have to prove that this is actually bounded or not. Actually this operator is not bounded. So we have to prove that in order to prove that it is not bounded, we have to prove that it does not satisfy this inequality t of x less than or equal to c into norm x for any c for every x. In order to prove this, it is enough to prove that norm t x should be by norm x less than or equal to c does not hold. Which means that we have to find a collection of elements or a particular class of elements which is defined on capital X such that whose norm Tx by norm X should always be greater than or equal to any given real number. Okay, So if it is bounded, this should be holding for every X. If it is not bounded, we should be able to find a class of elements on capital X such that whose norm tx by norm x should be greater than or equal to any given real number of our choice. So for that we have to consider a class of elements. So for we consider we consider a sequence x and t which is defined as t raised to n. This is actually a polynomial where t is an element of 0 and norm of x and t is equal to maximum t element of 0, 1 and modulus of t raised to n instead of modulus of t raised to n I can write it as t raised to n because t is actually an element in closed interval 0, 1 so t raised to n is always positive and if t belongs to closed interval 0, 1 t raised to n is obtained its maximum at t is equal to 1. For every other element in between 0 and 1, t raised to n is actually less than 1. So its maximum is always 1. So clearly, norm of x and t is actually 1. Now, using the definition, t of x and t is actually d by dt of t raised to n which is equal to n into t raised to n minus 1. Now norm of t x and t is equal to maximum t element of 0 1 modulus of n t raised to n minus 1. Here also we do not need modulus because this is always positive and also like t raised to n t raised to n minus 1 is also obtained its maximum at 1. So its maximum is actually n into 1 which is equal to n. So norm of t x and t actually equal to 1. Norm of x and t is actually equal to 1. Norm of t x and t is actually equal to n. Now norm of t x and t by norm of x and t should be equal to n by 1 okay so which is equal to n for every n element of n because we consider a sequence okay sequence has terms corresponding to every natural number so if at all our linear operator t is bounded then this should be less than or equal to any particular real number c which means that n should be less than or equal to c for every n belongs to n which implies that set of all natural numbers is bounded which is not at all possible okay so we cannot find a c such that n less than or equal to c for every c and also in other words we have found a sequence a class of sequence or, or a class of elements which is defined as x and t is equal to t raised to n in capital x such that norm of t x and t by norm of x and t cannot be less than or equal to c which means that 
t is not bounded okay so this is the thing about the differential operator okay i think actually we can define the same differential operator in the case of c0 1 as well if you define if you define instead of x if you define the collection of all continuous functions on 0 1 he, where also the norm is the same if you define the same this operator you can easily understand that using the same arguments using taking the, this same arguments x and t is equal to t raised to n t raised to n is a polynomial every polynomial is a continuous function you can easily prove that using the same arguments you can prove that it is not bounded so this proof can also be used for c01 okay x is equal to c01 so in this case t is not bounded so we have given an example of a bounded operators and a operator which is not bounded let's move on to one more operator which is actually the integral operator so example four so which is integral operator Two point seven point six. So consider C one x c is equal to C zero one. Okay, and define T from C zero one onto C zero one by t of x is equal to y as so where y is equal to where y is equal to integral 0 to 1 k of t tau x of tau d tau y of t so this is actually the operator which is defined on closed interval 0 1 which is called the integral operator which is defined as t of x is equal to y where y is integral 0 to 1 k of t to x to d to here x is this x is corresponding to this x here we have a new term k of t to which we haven't defined so where k of t to is called the kernel kernel of a linear operator t which is actually a continuous function continuous function which is defined on on closed interval 0 1 Cross closed interval 0 1. This is called, we call it as G. Okay. So this is a continuous function which is defined on the square closed interval 0 1 cross closed interval 0 1 or the cross product of the interval unit interval closed interval 0 1. So this is actually K of T. So understand this if you take any function on C 0 1 and another particular function k of t to on this interval this uh, square and t of x is defined as the integral of the, the product from 0 to 1 we have a useful terminology for this or we have very very many applications for this kernel associated with this linear operator but up until this stage we do not need much information about kernel other than it's a continuous function on this set that's the only thing up until now we need it so we will study about this kernel in detail on further lines so let's understand about the kernel for just the sake that it's a continuous function defined on the rectangle g okay so we have to prove that this is actually a bounded operator
it's actually linear. So to prove that, T is bounded. So given that K is a continuous function on 0, 1 cross 0, 1 or G. This is actually a compact set. Okay, product of two compact set. And K is actually a continuous function. Continuous function maps compact set onto a compact set, which means that its image is actually bounded. Okay, which means that there exists a real number K0 such that modulus of K of T to is less than or equal to K0. Okay. Now, we have for any X element of, for any X of T element of closed interval 0, 1, C0, 1, modulus of X of T should be less than or equal to maximum T element of 0, 1, modulus of x of t. This is trivial. And this is by definition the norm of the operator which is defined on c01. So this is the norm on c01. So this is equal to norm x. Or in other words, modulus of x of t or x of tau is less than or equal to norm x for every x element of c01. So these are the things which we need. So in order to prove that T is actually bounded, we have to take the norm of Tx. So norm of Tx is actually equal to norm of Y. By definition, T is actually from C01 onto C01. Here the norm is actually maximum t element of 0 1 modulus of y of t where y of t is defined as maximum t element of 0 1 modulus of integral 0 to 1 k of t to x to d to okay this is the thing now we have already a theorem which states that modulus of integral a to b f of x dx is always less than or equal to integral of modulus of okay using that theorem this can be represented as this is less than or equal to maximum T element of closed interval 0, 1, integral 0, 1, modulus of K of T to modulus of X to D to. Okay. Also, we have already established that modulus of K of T to is actually less than K naught. And also modulus of x of t or x of tau is always less than or equal to norm x. Using both of them here we get this is less than or equal to maximum t element of post interval 0 1 integral 0 to 1 k naught into norm x d tau. This is actually constant. k naught into norm x is actually constant does not have a variable tau. So this is equal to maximum t element of closed interval 0, 1, k0 into norm x into integral 0 to 1, d2. Integral 0 to 1, d2 is actually 1. So this is actually equal to maximum t element of closed interval 0, 1, k0 into norm x into 1. Here the variable is t. On the right hand side, K0, norm x and 1 does not have any variable t. So it's actually the maximum of a particular constant. So maximum of a constant is always that constant itself. So the answer becomes K0 into norm x into 1. 
so this should be equal to k naught into norm x into 1 equal to k naught into norm x into 1 this should be equal to okay or we have started with norm tx we can write as norm tx norm tx is actually less than or equal to k naught into norm x here c is actually k naught so we have defined an integral operator and we have established that for any x element of close to the c0 one norm tx is actually less than or equal to k naught into norm x where c is actually k naught if we take c as k naught we can clearly understand that t is actually bounded so our integral operator is actually a bounded operator so this is the proof of the bounded operator okay now let's move on i have one more examples i'll give you this example as an exercise so this is an exercise for you example 2.7.7 related to matrix this is an example for you it's an easy example you only have to use cauchy schwartz inequality to establish the boundedness okay so i think you can easily do it if you have any doubt you can contact me i hope you understood this thank you